Hey there, welcome back over here to my kitchen. Today I'm so excited to show you five new dinner ideas that pretty much only require one pot to throw together. So you already know, these dinners are so simple to make. I really hope you enjoy them. And let's go start cooking. To kick us off today, we are making this yummy, yummy enchilada skillet. So to the pan on my stove, I have a pound of ground beef. To the ground beef, I seasoned it up with a half a teaspoon of oregano and cumin with a dash of salt and pepper. I broke this ground beef up with my meat masher and then I realized, oh man, I totally forgot to add in the onion. So now I'm adding in a half of a white onion that I diced into smaller pieces. I'm going to continue to break the ground beef up and cook it through at this point. Now that we have our ground beef nicely browned, I removed any excess grease in my pan and then I added in our additional seasonings, a half a teaspoon of cumin and oregano with a dash more salt and pepper. And then the next ingredients you will be tossing in is one can of drained and rinsed black beans followed by one can of corn. I did drain the corn, but I didn't rinse it. A four ounce can of diced green chilies. These are just the mild green chilies and they add quite a bit of yummy flavor they're not spicy at all and then this is optional but I do like adding in about three-fourths cup of cooked white rice or you could use brown rice but if you don't have cooked white or brown rice on hand you don't have to add it in and then after that I added in three-fourths cup of salsa any brand or type of salsa will work and then the last two ingredients I tossed in was one 10 ounce can of red chili enchilada sauce and one 10 ounce can of green chili enchilada sauce this will be so flavorful I gave this a really good stir and I let it simmer on my stove for about 10 minutes to thicken. While it was thickening up, I cut up our five corn tortillas into smaller strips just like this. Now that our simmering time is up, I'm going to stir in our smaller corn tortilla pieces and I'm going to let them cook in this dish for about three minutes. And you know me and you know how much I love cheese. So I'm going to be sprinkling about a cup of shredded cheddar cheese over the top and let it melt down and then I served it. If you're not a fan of cheese, of course, you don't have to add the cheese in, but here's my plate of food. I topped mine with plenty of cherry tomatoes, cilantro, guacamole, and lime but you could top yours with whatever your favorite enchilada or taco toppings are. This meal is so flavorful. Now we're making this Tuscan chicken with pasta and oh my, it is amazing. You need to try this one. To begin, I have one large chicken breast right here. I sliced it in half horizontally so it appears as two chicken breasts. You know I love doing this just because it makes the chicken so, so tender in the end and it cooks the chicken so much quicker. But I season the chicken generously on both sides with salt, pepper, and Italian seasoning. Once I was finished with that, over to my Dutch oven or you could use a large pot. Hot. I have a tablespoon of hot olive oil in there. I added the chicken and I cooked it for about four to five minutes on each side or until it was cooked through. And then once it was cooked, I removed it to a separate plate and I set this plate to the side. In the same pan that we cooked the chicken in, I melted down a tablespoon of butter. Then I added in our tablespoon of minced garlic. I let the garlic become fragrant. It only took about 30 seconds. Then I poured in our fourth a cup of chicken broth. I'm scraping all of the flavorful bits off of the bottom of our pan at this point. Once it was simmering for about a minute, I tossed in our two tablespoons of tomato paste along with about a half a teaspoon of oregano. You are going to let this simmer on your stove for about two minutes minutes until the tomato paste is incorporated with the rest of the ingredients and it kind of looks like this. Now add in your remaining two cups of chicken broth along with three-fourths cup of milk and three-fourths cup of heavy cream. Now for the sun-dried tomatoes, my favorite part, add in about a third a cup of those and give this a really good stir. Bring it up to a simmer. We can't forget about our fettuccine. Now I'm adding in about half a pound of fettuccine noodles that I broke in half so they fit in my pot better. I'm going to let this simmer on my stove for about 15 to 18 minutes, stirring it frequently until my noodles are cooked. I do wanna mention if your liquid line gets too low, you could always add a fourth a cup more chicken broth in at a time until your noodles are cooked. 
But now that our fettuccine is to the tenderness that I like it to be, I added in a half a cup of shredded Parmesan cheese along with the chicken that we cooked up earlier. I just cut it into bite-sized pieces and about two cups of fresh spinach. Stir this all together and let the spinach wilt down. It should only take about two minutes, then it's ready to serve. Here's my big bowl of pasta. I topped mine with more Parmesan cheese and fresh parsley to make it look pretty, but this is so rich, creamy, and divine. I'm sure you will devour this just like how I did. It is so good, but I served it alongside of a side salad with spinach, romaine, sliced carrots, cucumbers, cherry tomatoes, and dried cranberries. Now we're making this taco spaghetti and it definitely has to be one of my husband's favorites. To the pan on my stove, I have a pound of ground beef in there. I added one diced up white onion to the ground beef along with a tablespoon of minced garlic. I'm breaking the ground beef up and I am going to completely cook it through. Once it was cooked through, I removed any excess grease in my pan and I added about a tablespoon and a half of taco seasoning along with one can of Rotel and two and one fourth cup of water. Give this a really good stir. Now you're going to be adding in your eight ounces of spaghetti noodles. You do want to make sure you break the noodles in half just so they fit in your pan a little bit easier. And now make sure that the liquid is mainly covering the noodles. So if you do have to add in a fourth a cup more water, go ahead and add it in at this point. Let this simmer on your stove covered for about six minutes. Do stir it frequently though. And after those six minutes of simmering, uncover it and let it simmer for an additional eight to 10 minutes or until your noodles are cooked. If the water line does get too low while cooking your pasta, just add a little bit more water in at a time. The last thing I did was sprinkle a cup of shredded cheddar cheese on top. Once the cheese melted down, I served it up. This taco spaghetti is perfect topped with your favorite taco toppings. And this dinner just can't get any easier than that. It is just a one pan meal. It is amazing. Now we're making this lower carb seasoned chicken and vegetables. So to get this one started, we are going to cut up all of our veggies first. So I sliced one onion into smaller pieces. Next, you will want four cups of fresh broccoli florets. After that, go ahead and slice one zucchini into half moons. And the last veggie we'll cut up is one red bell pepper and go ahead and cut that into larger chunks. I set all of our veggies to the side. Now over to the pan on my stove, I poured a tablespoon of olive oil right in there. Once the oil was hot, I added in our one pound of cubed chicken breast. You could always use more or less chicken depending on your preference. And then you will season the chicken up. This seasoning mixture is amazing. It's a half a teaspoon of paprika, dried rosemary, garlic powder, onion powder, dried thyme, salt, and a fourth a teaspoon of pepper and chili powder. I gave this a really good stir and I cooked the chicken through at this point. Once our chicken was cooked, I removed it to a separate plate and I set that plate to the side. In the same pan we cooked the chicken, I added an additional tablespoon of olive oil along with all of the veggies that we cut up earlier. You are going to season them with a dash of salt and pepper and let these veggies cook for about two minutes. After a couple of minutes of cooking those veggies, you will add in a fourth a cup of chicken broth. Scrape all of those flavorful bits off the bottom of your pan at this point, and then you will let these veggies continue to cook for an additional six minutes or until they're to the softness that you like them to be. Now that our veggies are nice and tender, you will add back in your cooked chicken. Give this a really good stir, let the chicken heat through, and then this is ready to serve it up. This meal is so, so delicious. You could serve it with mashed potatoes on the side or seasoned rice on the side. You could really serve it with anything, but I just kept it simple on this night. This is so flavorful. All of those seasonings mixed together are amazing. 
Now we're making this turkey stuffed cabbage skillet and this one is really going to surprise you. So to begin, I diced up one onion into smaller pieces. Next, cut a half of a green cabbage into smaller pieces as well. After I was finished with that, I set those veggies to the side over to my large Dutch oven or you could use a large pot. I added my one pound of ground turkey. Next, you're going to add in your diced onion. If you don't care for ground turkey, you could Always use ground beef or ground sausage or ground chicken as a substitute. I broke the turkey up and I cooked it through and then I seasoned it with a dash of salt and pepper. Next, a half a teaspoon of garlic powder and onion powder with a fourth a teaspoon of dried thyme. Give this a really good stir. Now you're going to be adding in your one and a half cups of water followed by 14 ounces of diced tomatoes. I always use the petite diced tomatoes just because I like the size of them. I always think they cook the best. And then one cup of this minute white rice. You do want to use instant rice like this just so that the rice cooks best. Anyways, now I'm going to give this a really good stir and bring it up to a simmer. Once simmering, you are going to add in your cabbage, give this a really good stir, and let this simmer covered on your stove for about 10 minutes. You do want to make sure that you stir it frequently while it's simmering just so nothing sticks to the bottom of your pan. But now that my rice is tender, I am sprinkling one cup of Colby Jack cheese in. You are going to let the cheese melt down, then it's ready to serve. This dinner is seriously going to surprise you. All of the different flavors and the textures are spot on perfect. And even if you're not the biggest cabbage fan in the world, I still think you'll love this one. I have plenty more dinner videos like this on my channel, so make sure you're subscribed down below the video so you don't miss any more in the future. I'll see you in the next one, bye for now.